All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, it's 2.30, this is the last presentation for this session. Uh, this presentation is titled Infrastructure Working Group, Lessons in Risk and Reward, and it is being presented by Colleen Kiley. Colleen Kiley is the GIS Coordination Program Manager for CGIA and supports all of the GICC's committees and working groups. Her master's degree is in coastal zone management, and she has been in the GIS field for over 25 years. When she isn't thinking about GIS, she's an avid collector of tools to support her habit of making things from wood, metal, fabric, or whatever she can find. Please ignore the mess in her garage. Thank you. So to get started, a raise of hands, how many of you have had some kind of cable laid in your neighborhood in the past couple of years? So when you saw that, when you saw them pull up and start digging, was your first thought, oh God, how long is it gonna take before they cut my internet? There is a very good reason for that. And I'm gonna start with the Common Ground Alliance which is a group that's dedicated to preventing underground utility damage and promoting best practices. So each year they put out this uh, DIRT report, the Damage Information Reporting Tool. And on that tool, on that, uh, the 2020 report, they reported um, 385,000 damages to underground utilities. And the majority of them, 198,000, were to telecom assets, and the majority of the damagers was the telecom industry. So the, um, the CGA estimated that these damages cost three, $30 billion in societal costs, including facility repair, uh, property damage, medical bills, and cost to business interruption. So this is a big, expensive problem. And I'm gonna go into next what, um, how North Carolina became interested in this issue. So it started out in, um, in 2019 when the GICC, the Geographic Information Coordinating Council, went through a year-long process of discussing the topic at three of its quarterly meetings. So the local government committee, the private developers, and um, the emergency management community all expressed an interest in understanding access to um, infrastructure data. And what followed were presentations by stakeholders and a legal review of existing open data laws and um, the limited case law on the subject in North Carolina. Um, at the next meeting, they had a um, facilitated discussion on infrastructure data and access to it and um, use cases. And from that discussion, they learned how important infrastructure data is to the economic development community, to emergency response, transportation planning, and other important activities. So the many inconsistencies and unknowns in these discussions led to the development of the infrastructure working group, um, and which began meeting in late 2020. Um, so finally, the preliminary findings of this report were presented to the council late last year. And I'll go through some of the issues that came up during that facilitated discussion. So the, the GICC chartered the um, working group under its technical advisory committee to investigate uh, industry security concerns, regulations, policies, and best pra practices and to document layers that uh, can and cannot be shared. And one of the biggest problems that the, um, that the GICC discussed was that there's no single source for infrastructure data for people to go to. Um, there's no way to tell without having them marked what infrastructure data exists on the site um, and, what, and contacting the providers can be difficult. So each one has a, each provider has a, its own way to request data, and that may not be written down. It may be difficult to understand. Um, data can be provided in many different formats, which marks, makes um, regional projects very difficult, because if you're getting it in CAD format in one way and a PDF in another way, and maybe they're giving you a GIS file someplace else, it's hard to stitch that all together. 
So the, um, the GICC members were quite interested in this topic, so we had a lot of them on our working group, and we filled it in with um, a wide variety of stakeholders uh, within North Carolina. We brought in county and municipal stakeholders, so we tried to get folks from um, urban, developing, and, um, and rural counties. Uh, we brought in utility providers, um, and then we, uh, we brought in transportation, private development, and um, some other folks from the state. So the tasks for this working group that came down from the GICC um, were to uh, document common layers, investigate security concerns. The, the things on the, the top line here, they all came from GICC discussions and needs. The bottom line came from discussions with our local government committee and their members and what they needed. Um, and the very last one, that data sharing methods is really kind of the, the glue that holds it all together. So the group looked at five different categories, um, electric, water, sewer, stormwater, natural gas, and telecom. Um, and they asked for each of these categories, um, things like what types of infrastructure fall into the category? Um, are there existing statewide layers? Um, who manages or produces the layers? Uh, who needs the data? And um, is the infrastructure data widely produced? So is it something that's just produced in some instances or is it something that everybody that provides a, like electric service produces that kind of data? Um, the process that they went through was to gather some use cases. Uh, they collected them from both users and providers. Um, we engaged the um, state GIS users committee, so that's the group of uh, state GIS folks, the local government committee, and our federal interagency committee there. So we reached out to as many as we could. Uh, we held interviews with data providers and data users, industry organizations, um, statewide experts, such as the 811 board chair. Um, and based on those discussions and our research, the group surveyed um, data producers to collect information on what data they produce and how they share it. Um, and they also gathered uh, information on disclaimers and data sharing agreements based on feedback and requests from the local government committee. So let's take a quick look at what we learned. Um, very first thing is this was a messy process. Um, I, it, it surprised us all. Uh, some of the things that, had hap that happened here have never happened in the history of our coordination program. Um, we had a very hard time getting in touch with some of the utility providers. Um, and the first thing that one of them told me when we finally did get them to sit down with us was that this subject immediately puts people in defensive mode. And so um, we had to know that going into the rest of them that this subject scares people. Um, and, but you know, on the positive side, when we, when we did meet with them, we had great, <clears throat> we had great discussions from people who needed the data and the data providers, excuse me. <coughs> um, but on the less productive side, um, we had one data manager in the state who got very scared. Um, he was concerned that the state was making a play to force people to share their data. Um, and so he began reaching out to um, industry groups, uh, to GICC members, um, and, and it caused a lot of fear. Um, there was, it, it bred some mistrust that we had to then get through. Um, it, it, that culminated in him meeting with the, um, the GICC chair and the state GIO to request that they discontinue this working group, which we did not do, and we, we just, we explained to him what we were doing, but we still weren't able to get past, for, with that particular person, the mistrust of what we were trying to do. And that resulted in one of our working group members pulling out, which was a huge loss in my opinion, because this particular working group member was had a very particular um, perspective as someone who did not share any data publicly. Um, and that was something that we needed to be able to document and understand why everybody shares data in different ways so that we could present that, um, those different perspectives in our report. 
Um, so what we learned is that when we went out to solicit information from people, we needed to approach them and say, hey, we're interested in understanding the security concerns around sharing data uh, so that they understood that we weren't trying to make them share it. Um, so then the other thing that we found uh, is that given the exact same data, two different organizations are going to share it in two different ways. And I'll show you a little bit of this later uh, in, this, in this presentation. Um, it's really an evaluation of risk. Uh, people do their own risk assessments. They may be based on things like physical risk from damage, um, positional and attribute accuracy, completeness, appropriate scale, um, inference. So can someone use the location of features in one layer to infer the locations of another layer that they want to damage? Um, and then other things, things like cost to respond to requests when your infrastructure is damaged, um, the cost of losing development opportunities to other, other areas who may have open data, um, inefficiencies in your current way of sharing data that may create silos and prevent you from working efficiently. Um, so what we found is this isn't black and white. Um, people are coming down, they're evaluating their situation, their data, um, and what they need, and they're making a decision on whether to share their data. And so just suffice it to say, this is a complicated subject. Uh, layers we thought no one would be worried to share. We found out there were reasons why people weren't sharing them, and I'll get into some of those as well. Um, one of our main goals was to understand why data is shared the way that it is. Uh, why were some people putting it out there for everyone to see and other ones making you file, uh, you know, three forms of ID just to be able to get to their data? So let's start with open data sharing. We um, put out a survey to data providers and we asked them a lot of questions um, about how they're sharing their data and what they're sharing and why. Uh, and these are some of the exact responses that we got. So um, the first one here is we have, you know, very few requests now that we're sharing the data. So it saves us time. Um, we also have that uh, Prevention of damage is another benefit of why they're sharing it. Um, there's a positive impact on development. Um, we heard from developers that, you know, if they're trying to decide between two places, one with open, one that's not, and they need to make a split decision, they're going to go with the one that they can see can support their development. Um, and finally, this last one was one that I hadn't really thought of, but it makes a ton of sense. If you're sharing your data publicly, um, you're your people are not responding to requests for that data. They can take their time to improve the data and make it more accurate. So to the opposite view, why are people not sharing it? Um, the very number one reason that we heard was um, we don't share because of Homeland Security. Um, and the other phrase that we heard a lot was domestic terrorism. And you can see from this that even though you may have um, data that's shared publicly, when you get a new manager and they perform that risk analysis, that may not stay the same. Um, and so one of the things that we began to suspect as we went along, but that people were not saying, was that perhaps um, data accuracy was actually one of the reasons why people were or were not sharing their data. And that wasn't what they were saying when they were when they were asked, why don't you share? So we that same um, survey that we put out, uh, based on our interviews with people, we gave everyone a long list of reasons why we'd heard people share and don't share data. And we asked them to mark everything um, that affected why they do or do not share their data. And what we found um, was the majority of the responses that we got were from um, water utilities. So I'm going to give you the, the bar charts from that. And what was the number one reason? Um, it was not Homeland Security. Uh, it was data completeness, followed by attribute accuracy, and then location accuracy, which was tied with physical infrastructure security. So the top three relate to data quality. And these were not just the answers from people who do not share their data, they were the answers for people who do. So what that tells me is when your data is good, 
This influences why you may want to share your data. And when your data is bad, it may influence why you do not share your data. But you're not going to, I mean, most people aren't going to be bold enough to say, well, I don't share my data because it's really crummy. They may say, well, it's because of Homeland Security. So um, I consider this a really positive thing because if we can help people make their data better, then maybe we will get to the point where more people are able to share their data if they want to. All right. So this was another thing that came up, and I think that we've all wondered about this question. Um, you can see plenty from the air, so why the heck won't you share the data? I mean, we can see it. We can walk by it. OK. Um, and then one of the most descriptive answers that I got was, uh, it's the difference between giving someone, the, giving Timothy McVeigh the uh, plans to the federal building and making him scope it out. So in other words, Hopefully, if someone's scoping this stuff out, they're going to be seen in the act and maybe caught beforehand. Um, but they don't, they don't contest that, you know, somebody can see it and just do something. All right. So another view was this. Um, you know, they just don't want to make it e easier to infer network junction points that may take out the whole system. Okay. So I'm going to move on a little bit faster now. Um, one of the things the group discussed was the possibility of uh, developing a secure portal for um, where data users can um, log in and gain access to the data. This is actually happening at the federal level. So this is something that we hope that maybe in the future we can bring to North Carolina. But at this moment, I think we need to build up our data a little bit better. Um, so some of the gray areas that we get into, um, one of the things the the group found was that there are no best practices really out there for, um, for GIS data uh, for utilities. Um, what we found was that uh, the best practices focused on physical security, and when data was concerned, it was really more about securing your files, not about the actual data um, and the, uh, the drawings and the, the GIS system. So this was one of the areas that the that the group fell short just simply because we could not find um, any resources for it. Um, another thing that we struggled with was um, if you're going to share your data, um, how can you do so? What are the, the appropriate level of detail and the correct balance between usefulness and protection? Um, so we found that there's two real ways people are doing this. Um, they're buffering or generalizing their data to show it, or they may be just using scale. So um, on the left here, you see the, um, an example of Duke Power using buffering to show their um, easements. And on the right, you're seeing scale. That's the, um, the National Gas Pipeline database. You go on there, they will only show you the county that you're in. But take a look at this here. This is an example of the federal system that is showing the exact same um, transmission lines, but they're lines, and they actually have attributes. So two different organizations, two entirely different ways of determining that it's safe to share that data. Um, and again, service areas, we thought that this would be a slam dunk. Why wouldn't you share your service areas? Well, it turns out that people define them in different ways. They can be um, the data, the area that you actually provide uh, the exact area. They can be the area that you service along with the areas that you plan to service. Um, and they could be the areas that you service, but maybe not at full capacity. Um, so people just aren't willing to always share them. And this, I, I found this map online and I just thought it kind of summed it up because uh, it's just fuzzy boundaries seems to be what one of the reasons here. Okay. Last here, one more shade of gray. This came up um, at the very end, and this came from the, uh, the 2020 DIRT report. There's a thing, um, ghost pipes. They are, they're unlocated pipes. They're old pipes underground, um, and they cause a lot of problems because if you are excavating and you are looking for a pipe, you may find one of these pipes and you think that you found the water line that you're supposed to be excavating around and you do that very carefully and then you get to work digging and you hit the real water line. So because these things are not mapped, 
they are causing damage to the real facilities because um, people are mistaking them. Um, and this came up, this is part of the, uh, the DIRT report, their recommendations of a, uh, a national GIS database. Um, so I think, you know, we, we would love to, to work that way, but notice the, the second paragraph there that the geographic coverage and volunteered information from stakeholders and asset owners is paramount to the success. And that really means getting everyone on board. Okay, so the, um, the working group came up with two different sets of um, recommendations, one for data providers and one for the GICC. So the data providers, um, you'll notice here that we do not recommend. Um, there's no specific recommendation to share your data here. What we concentrated on were recommendations that would make it possible for you to share your data if you wanted to. So coming up with things like um, your, uh, your best practices, metadata, documenting your process, making it easier for people to know how to get your data, whether it's internally or externally, um, working on your accuracy of your attributes and your location. Um, and, uh, and then finally, the last part is for those who have a need, developing regional data sharing partnerships. And for the GICC recommendations, uh, the first is to revisit this uh, periodically because as you all know from news, this changes all the time. We have all kinds of new events that may change the, um, the risk analysis. Um, we also would like to engage more industry stakeholders. We had a difficult time bringing them into the conversation sometimes and we would love to have more of that and some stakeholders who will introduce us and, and put others at ease so that there's not mistrust in what we're trying to do. Um, and uh, finally, we had a lot of folks within the local government community who wanted help with metadata. So specifically tasking the metadata working group to help them with that. And um, finally, monitoring funding. Um, there's been mention already of funding that's come down um, so for folks who are looking to do better mapping um, or in, in, you know, improve their accuracy of location or attributes, getting them in touch with the right kind of funding. Um, and that will be it for me today. Any questions? Yeah. It's all over the place. It really, that's one of the things we found is it is absolutely all over the place. You have folks, we had folks on our committee that are completely open data shops. Carrie, they share it all. We had others that were completely co closed data shops. They will not share it. They will give you a piece of paper. Um, so it, it depends. I was talking with um, somebody who worked on that Highfeld site because it really seems to me that if, they, if the federal government has decided that it is safe to share your transmission line data, then I feel like that should be something that everybody should share similarly across the board. Um, but it, it's, I mean, like you saw, it, it really just depends on who's got the data and, and what their comfort level is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
That's a common one. That's that was one of the major ones that we that we uncovered. It when we asked people about their data sharing practices, there was a that process which we kind of called like a closed data process where you're getting uh, a file of only a specific area. Then you had the sort of the open data process where maybe it's on a website. Um, and, and even within that closed data process, there's various different ways. Some will give you the whole area. Some will only give you the, the work area that you're on. Um, but what we did discover when we asked people was, did you ever, have you ever um, turned down a request? And what we heard was no. So people can get the data according to the ones that we talked to, um, but you just have to maybe go through a long process to get it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It what we discovered in our work within the discussions we had in our working group is even within the same department you have folks who have differing opinions on what it's safe to share and and not share so it is a um it, it really just comes down to who's the manager at the time on what gets shared and how Yeah, they, there is a um, there is like a federal homeland security statute, and that's sort of what they what they cite. But it's fairly vague about how it defines utilities and what is um, you know considered protected homeland security stuff. And that's why people interpret it different ways. <laughs> yeah, the. Um, the the emergency management community is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, and that's I, yeah. I mean, that kind of gets down to the mapping is partially the issue here is getting that better mapping. Right, right. Mm-hmm. No, I think the, um, the, the GICC has legal counsel and she looked into it and it was just really sparse on what was out there, especially within North Carolina. Are you asking were there other states who have um, no no um, there is well Michigan does have a system um, I'm not entirely familiar with it but I know that they've got an initiative to try and get their utilities mapped um, I don't know whether it's public I don't know how far along they are but they're the only one that I can think of uh, I gave this presentation at a, a national GIS like GIO kind of meeting NISJIC and nobody there other than Michigan had, you know, had started something like this. Mm-hmm. They don't have them updated, but is, has there been any effort by all? I know you all have been looking at it. 
Yeah. Not Yes, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So are there have there been any talks about the reason Not that I know of for this and uh, you know for for our purposes we weren't really in the the business of trying to to you know formulate any kind of legislation. But as far as the, the service areas, um, yeah, there's maps out there. And kind of like I, sh yeah. Yeah, it, sometimes the territory, like you said, it isn't actually what they service. It, it's their territory, but not, somebody else may service a little part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. So it is three separate grades, but if you want to keep it like the majority of what's coming from the I can always talk to you afterwards or while we're eating some fruit and yogurt. <laughs> Thank you all.